Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Silver Rudder. We're just lining up for the large start. Standing next to me is from X Yachts. Thanks very much for coming, Thomas. Thanks for having me. Thomas, we're just going to comment the start that goes, the starts in a few minutes' time. And afterwards, I'll spend more time introducing you and who you are. Very briefly, you are what for X Yachts and the uh, new XR41? Uh, actually, that's a bit longer story. Uh, maybe we should take it afterwards. But my background is as a naval architect, and I've uh, been managing the startup of, uh, of uh, the project. Uh, and actually, since May, uh, I've uh, resumed being uh, self-employed with my company, uh, Milek, uh, this uh, Milek Engineering and Naval Architecture. Okay. Well, let's do that in just a second. I'd love let's to hear that. a lot more yeah. about that in just a second, Thomas. And first of all, before I forget, you know, thanks very much for coming all the way to Svenborg. Let's look at the start there. That's Amaretto. That's, you know, it's a one-off boat. And I raced against him two years ago and thought, oh, I should be able to handle him. But uh, a lot of these one-off boats are ultra-light compared to what they look like. And you can tell us a lot more about the design of boats like that in just a second. But uh, right. looking down the line, you've got, you know, you've got 50-year-old boats, nor ships, and you've got a, and you've got totally high-tech, brand new boats. Look at the boat behind there, the IMX40. Is an IMX40 a contender to race like this with you know very modern boats? Uh, it has some years on its back uh, uh, now, but uh, from its time, it was uh, really, really uh, uh, competitive on the ORC or IMS, as it uh, was named at, at that time, and and still is actually. Look at that boat in the middle yeah. there, it looks tiny, but it is in fact 40 feet. That's an Ulva, and it looks minute, but due to its length, it's in this race here, racing against uh, huge, great big boats. So it, amazing the development that we've had of boats, you know, from, from you know, from uh, uh, the modern day to dating back to the mid 70s when the first boats in here will come from. Absolutely. We've got, about, we've got about a minute and 15 seconds to the start here. Let's talk a little bit about some of the boats you can see to windward here. Yeah, there are the uh, IMX, uh, IMX 40 is still there, and uh, we have the X37, uh, which was uh -huh. uh, also very fast uh, at One its minute. time, and still is. Yeah. Yeah. And on the right there, you've got the Dwinger 2.0, which is a Sunfast 3600, which is definitely a contender. The red Indeed. boat just came into the screen there on the right there is the uh, is an Archambault. Just turn around, is the Archambault A40. He's definitely a contender, has the waterline and, and is a very confident racer. The boat that just jived on the left-hand side of the screen there is a, uh, an Open 40, a uh, French French built boat, open 40, what we call a class 40. Yeah. He's very, very fast once he gets a little bit of slack off in his sheets, but he's not Absolutely probably not the best upwind boat. But and ideal for this kind of race, I think, with a lot of reaching. Yeah. 20 seconds to the start. The, the picture you can see here is from the drone. Now, it looks like a very conservative start, doesn't it? You can see between our yellow windward mark yeah. and the leeward mark. That's going to be quite exciting compared to the, I mean, look, the, the, the view that we have from here looks a lot more hectic, but when you see it from the drone, it looks actually a little bit more settled. That was the start of the large class. Unfortunately, there's an X-37, which is just chopped onto the ground right on the starting line. That's a pity. Unfortunately, that's a real, but real a pity. a clear line otherwise. And a clear line, and it's a very heavy bit. a big boat to have to get uh, to clear off the line. It really is. That's going to be tough going. And I can see that a couple of boats that have gone on ground have found it very, very difficult to, to free themselves. And the boat is so big that it's very, very difficult to... Uh, to be able to clear a single hand out. The boat just behind there, which is Jens Listel, um, with the guild Seldin on the side of his boat. That's a big, serious boat. He sails a lot of hundreds of miles, perhaps thousands of miles every year. As the, you know, he's done the, the round Denmark race, and he's done the Gotland 500, very experienced sailor. And looking at, looking up the, the fleet there, there's the Archambault A, um, sorry, the Arcona 365, with Michael, well, Michael Hoffman. He used to sail in the light works. Can I get you? There you go. Look at this drone picture across the fleet now. In this start, which is the large start, which is uh, the second smallest of the of the of the keel boats, we have 93 starting boats. That's pretty good going, isn't it? Oh, it definitely is. Yeah, it's a really impressive sight. Now, compared, if we compare that to some of the starts at other races, I mean, we are exceeding them by like three. I raced the ORC's Worlds last year, and you had a third of the amount of boats in, in, yeah. in the various classes. So did I, so I yeah, know yeah. the comparison, yeah. <laughs> and these boats are, are boats that would normally have how many people on board? 
Well, the uh, IMX40, for instance, uh, would usually have a crew of uh, nine, maybe ten for OSC racing. Yeah. And and here you've got these 40-foot boats, 39-foot boats racing uh, with one person on board? Exactly. And not uh, necessarily all the trimming lines close to that one person. No, not on a boat of this size. The <laughs> no. cockpit's going to be quite big. Look at some of these outstanding pictures that we have from our uh, rib out in the water. It looks like Klaus Juan Messen in the, uh, in frost, the frost box mm, is yeah. out in the lead. Let's not let's not underestimate this young man. Klaus Van Maasen has won the C, the uh, silver rudder in a CP66 in the mini class. I he remember is that. Tough yeah. as, oh. He's tough as nails. That was definitely not a boat they should have won. <laughs> but even in uh, even in you know in 25 knots of wind, he held that CP66 planing for literally for hours. They said the boats were chasing him. What an yeah. achievement! Yeah. yeah, he's a tough guy. So this is our, our our rib that we've got filming right at the front of the fleet. Looks like there's a. Uh, there's uh, an Ulva right in the middle there. You see, it looks oh like yeah, a tiny, yeah. tiny little hull. Yeah. Screeching. He's a local guy, a, a boat designer, should I like you are, called Thomas Valley. And he's in oh fact. Oh, yeah, I know him. He I didn't know he boat. was sailing that boat. Yeah. yeah, he built that boat himself. His original Ulva burnt to the ground, lithium batteries that burned his Ooh, boat completely. Yeah. So he bought, the, uh, he bought the plug and rebuilt a new boat and has to really? totally fit it ah. in. Yeah. So it's good fun to see. He just uh, sailed the Danish Championships and got a second place. Uh, did very well there. So looking at this boat here, you've got the Arcona, the Arcona 380, I believe it is there. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. The Arcona is, is that is that a, you know if a family were thinking about buying a fast p performance boat, is that a is that a good boat? Is that a boat they could you consider? It it sure is. It's a nice uh, Scandinavian uh, style boat. Uh, really. Yeah. Well built, uh, I believe, uh, and also, bone. yeah, and uh, uh -huh. good performing also. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Looks, look at this fantastic picture from the drone. They've got Klaus Van Mast at the front there in the uh, in the frost box. The interesting story is the uh, the boat is not his, is it? The boat uh, belongs right, to Jakob uh, Frost. Jakob, yeah. So Jakob, if you're busy at work, <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> built the boat himself. Jakob, if you're busy at work, looks like you made a good decision lending this boat to uh, Klaus who sailed with you and crewed with you and has helmed for you for years. I assure you the boat is in good hands. Uh, we visited Jakob uh, Klaus yesterday and he has a, a huge great big bag full of cookies and sweets for the voyage. He still hasn't grown good, out of his... Uh, good decision. Yeah, good for me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at some of the other boats on the fleet there. I mean, you've got the XX37 right ahead of us. It's still unfortunately still stuck at ground. Yeah, it's difficult to get free. And there's a huge variation of the boats. Um, you've got boats like Lofa 37s in this race, Lofa 4004s, um, really fast boats in that time. Slender designs, uh, really good for down, downwind and for reaching. Look at this light boat here, this light blue boat here. Oh yeah. Do you know who that is? Uh, no, that I'm is, not familiar with that. That's one of my favorite races on the course. His name's Martin Messen there in his Kuluta, which is a Koopman 39. It's an aluminium boat. Martin's a great guy. He is the owner of the uh, of Rainskeep. Ah, I know the okay, day, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's an outstanding guy. He's a real silver rudder aficionado, and has been with us as an active sponsor. And and, and ne never mind the sponsorship. I mean, he's just the kind of person that brings such joy and pleasure and 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 uh, comradeship to a race like this. Him and his wife are just an ex amazing contribution to this race. So thanks to Good both to of them yeah. for coming back year after year. Looks like this X37 in front of us is coming off the ground. Bita, this boat in front of us on the, on the line here, is the Archambault A40. It's a really, really fast boat in the right hands. They're applauding the X37 now. Yeah, they just came free of the ground. Huh. And they did that all on its own by just uh, bringing the boat to leeward, just healing it over a little bit. Unfortunately, Lars Peter um, hasn't managed to get his uh, Sunfast 30. 3300 free of the ground just yet. I'm going to try and get out of the wind a bit here. It's very windy yeah. here. Yeah. And look at the drone pictures across here. You've got 91 oh, yeah. boats. What about a side. 91 what boats a side. in the picture. What a view there. And look at some of the boats that haven't quite crossed the starting line yet. You've got a, a Nayad there, a 363, which has got a race against the Archambault A40. Looks like he's managed to, looks like the 3300 is clearing the ground as well now, which would be lovely. He deserves it. Ola Peter has, uh, has you know, sailed all the way from Norway to, to race this race. I wish him the very, very, very best of luck managing to get off the ground there. So he's definitely a fought for it. He certainly has. Look at this uh, behind Ola Peter there on the left hand side. That's perfect filming, Mass. Behind there, can you see what boat that is? That's the uh, XC 47. 
that's the new XC47 yeah. with the torque and corner on board. Exactly. And we are excited to see how that boat performs. I, I, is that the sort of boat you'd expect somebody to turn up at a race like this in? Uh, you wouldn't think so, but actually it makes sense. It's a, a hybrid boat, it's electric driven, it has a huge battery uh, capacity. Uh, so actually for a, a long distance race with a, a lot of uh, uh, power usage for instruments and stuff like that, it's ideal, I believe. Uh. It's a huge round of applause, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. You can just go down with the camera, mess. Come down. This huge round of applause is by the spectators sitting on the banks here. I'm guessing there's probably about 300 people here. They what just applauded all of Peter. He's been stuck there for more than an hour. He was in, now this boat is in the is in the small start, uh, medium start, I guess. Yeah, 33. Yeah, foot. the medium. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely fought for it. Yeah. What a fight he put in. Looks like he's uh, forgotten to look at. There's a boat on a starboard tack right behind him, but he's he's let him uh, uh. he's letting him pass. I can see, which is great. Yeah, so I'm sorry interrupting. You said you were talking about the XC47. Let's talk about that. Uh, whether that's the kind of boat you expect to see in a race like this. Yeah, as I said, uh, you wouldn't really think so. And it's a fairly heavy boat, but it still performs really well. And it's with all the cruising uh, features aboard, it, it's really well set up for a long distance uh, race. Uh, huge huge battery uh, capacity due to it's uh, it's a hybrid boat so it's actually electrically driven driven yeah. uh, so it has the ba battery capacity of a small tesla actually so oh, really? more than enough uh, uh, power to get him around the island uh, with all instruments and uh, I think I mean, it's a, it's a, you say it's a heavy boat, but you know, it like weighs like about 15 tons. It isn't, yeah. it isn't crazy heavy. No, no, not and, at all. And I, w and I was on board the boat yesterday, yeah. and I mean, it's absolute pure luxury. It's it's gorgeous. It's like yeah. being in a very big apartment. The volume of that boat, I've never seen anything like it. I've seen much bigger boats that have a much, much more enclosed uh, feeling. So the extractable, right, yeah. the extractable extra espresso machine. Yes, uh, <laughs> there are some really nice features. There certainly are. So looking at the uh, the boat pictures, uh, we, can we move the camera over to your hand, please? So we're going to go to the water and talk to Johan, who's uh, following the fleet as they go out of the sound. How are we doing there, Johan? What's the what's that boat uh, just behind you? Uh, that's the X40, uh, and they're all faring really well. Uh, it's going quite well for them. Uh, there's still a bit of gust here. It's, uh, it's a little bit more wind than we saw in the in the medium start. So some of the guys are still fighting a little bit. We just saw one boat uh, healing quite uh, badly before uh, due to a gust. But generally speaking, I would say that these guys are also doing the champagne sailing, uh, but just with boats, a little bit more gust than. than but these boats don't broach, do they? I mean, these big heavy boats don't broach up like uh, the uh, the minis and the small. No, no, no. No, I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was one of the lighter boats we saw moving a little bit more. I'm not quite sure which one it was, but but no, these big heavy boats, I guess the X40, you guys know better than me, but I'm guessing that it's uh, close to 10 tons or something, maybe more. So it takes a little bit more, doesn't it, than we saw with the early uh, Absolutely. No, it's a very, boats. very, very stable and comfortable boat. Absolutely. Yeah. So who's at the... Are you anywhere near the front of the pack? Amaretto, is he quite close uh, to the front? No, we're a little bit, uh, we're a little bit far down. Who are you asking about? Yeah, we sort of who's around. I can see Amoretto there. He's a fast yeah, boat, you know, one off one design. Do we know the 3600? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we still have a Klaus Hunt in, uh, in the lead, but yeah. definitely, uh, if, you see, if you look that way, then we see Klaus Hunt in the cross box in the lead. But we also see Thomas uh, Benning, I guess, in the lead, but not too far behind. The distance is really close. The boat behind you there? The boat behind you is Yitz. Now, the boat behind you is Yitz Winger. In his uh, Sunfast 3600, he's been and sailed this race, uh, uh, sailed this race a score of times. Uh, not score, that's 20, 10 yeah. times probably. But you can easily go up through all the fleet if you want, out of throughout the fleet. Go ahead a bit. So these, yeah, these are the just, large uh, boats you have. Just yes. talk about talk about what the, the boats doing around you. Talk about the uh, the uh, the concentration of the sailors. There's a lot more space between the boats, so even though there are 91 boats racing. There's a little bit more space between them, but as you said, they're still very, very focused sailors, and we still see a little bit of close racing. I mean, we see the X40 and the X40 right now, I mean, being quite close, they're behind the Sunfast. 
it still takes a lot of skill to sail these boats through the the sound. I mean, even though it's not as big of a fleet as the medium fleet, it's still something that they really need to uh, to focus. This boat oh, that's passing guys. us yeah. right now, the one-off, you know, he's a, a real pro, isn't he, Philip? You know this guy quite well. Indeed, indeed. And that's, uh, that's Knabbe, the boat's called, uh, and that's a really, really fast boat. That's a one-off boat, a carbon mast and carbon boom. And that boat is extremely yeah. light. Don't, don't be fooled. It looks like a, it looks like a, a souped-up 1990s design. But if you see that boat in the water, it bobs around all the place. Do you know this boat? No, I'm, I'm not uh, familiar with it. Oh. No, I, I remember. I thought I could beat him as well, but so, no way. <laughs> so we're at a very, uh, yeah, we're we're through the narrow part, and now they're starting again to go a little bit closer uh, to the wind up towards uh, the end of uh, of tour and and out of sound. So we see that they're all actually able to to stay on port tack like previously. That's very nice for them. So it's not too much tacking they have to do. Uh, staying where we are right now, we have the X65 Sport. We have Black Maggie, also a boat that that is very known to this race, isn't it? It's been here a number How's of times. How is Wolfram doing in the Black Maggie? How close is he to the head of the fleet? I think he's actually, um, I would say, uh, one third down or so. He's not, I guess it was not the most aggressive start in the world for him. I, uh, I'm quite sure we'll yeah, see him passing, very close to the, I think we'll see him quite close to the front of the fleet. And uh, Wolfram Hypek in this boat, I mean, he told me that he had new dagger boards, new, he's got new sails. I, I, wow. I guarantee you that this boat's going to be way up the front. Thanks very much. Yeah, that is a very, very fast boat. Indeed it is. Not it, that old either. From the no. Back, it? So it was new class as well. No, it's a very new boat. That boat won the medium class and he sorted it all in half, extended it by two meters, and then won the large class and took the record. Don't underestimate that wooden boat. <laughs> it may look like a... a so if we look... film that... Go on. Yeah, if we film down the fleet right now, we actually see that the wind is dying a little bit now here. We see a lot of the boats are trying to uh, to bear off. I, I guess the wind shifted a little bit as well. I don't know if you can see the blue boat that is the windward down here. I'm just going to get Petra to try to film it. So we see a lot of the boats went very close to Tuber to try to stay uh, to windward. Uh, but now the wind is completely gone actually for a second here. And that's that's the tricky part of this uh, water, of these waters here that one minute you're sailing and the next minute you're you're completely stuck. So it really takes tremendous concentration for these sailors. Yeah, the boat that we can see that was Michael Hoff in his uh, in his Arcona 385. But you're very right. Um, what happens just there is that there's a funnel effect between the forest on the right hand side, on the to on the tossing side, and then and the sort of the, the hill on the windward side, on the tour side. And the wind always plays tricks there. And some of the boats that are impatient yeah. will start trying to tack instead of just waiting for the wind to get back to their its original course or, or direction. I'm, I'm sure you'll also be happy to know that we have the Sunfast Popcorn, uh, which got off, uh, which was run aground, is, is out here by us now, so he's, he's on his way, and it seems like he's uh, actually sailing quite fast through the fleet at the moment. Uh, he must all be the way exhausted. down there to leeward, he's coming. Johan, he must be exhausted. He's been battling at it for an hour. You know, he, he threw his anchor overboard at least 10 times to try and pull the boat off. He was rolling the boat side to side. I mean, he deserves he deserves a prize just for coming free, getting free of the ground, continuing in the race. But we've seen that a couple of times, haven't we? That people actually almost uh, they run around and have a huge struggle in the beginning. Uh, we also have Nicholas here, also a local guy, sailmaker. Yeah, we should talk about Henrik Boy. Henrik Boy is a is a is a local oh, sailmaker yeah, here. Nicholas. Boy P sales. He's, uh, he's one of our recent latest sponsors. Thank you very much for jumping on board with us there, um, Henrik. Henrik is, is known on the, on the, on the Silver Rudder starting list. I think this is probably, I'm guessing, his eighth start. So it's great to see him out there. He's no youngster either. And he's been, you know, he's renowned within the Danish sailing community in the last, uh, I don't know, 40 years or so. Good to see. That boat you're filming now. Talk so about that. I am X38. Yeah, we have the IMX38 here. I think he also ran around just before the start, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. He's on his phone right now. He's probably calling his mates, talking about what a rubbish start he had at the Silver Rudder this year. But anyway, it looks like he's on his way also in good shape. He might be calling his insurance Coming out company. Now. Yeah, maybe calling his insurance company to say that it wasn't that bad, but it was filled, wasn't it? 
Mm. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, let's try to go back down a little bit through here. I see, um, what is your good friend with Rainski? He's coming down here in his lovely boat as well. Oh, with yeah, that's right. Kuluta. That's uh, Martin Massenbeer. Yeah, we just talked about him in the light blue boat. That's a great drone picture there. Um, but Johan, I'm just leaving you for a second. We've got a drone photo here. Got an absolutely gorgeous picture um, taken just to the leeward side of the boats as they're healing over. Uh, you viewers out there should really enjoy this. This is absolutely amazing cover footage. Absolutely. Amazing background as well. Thomas, look what's happening here. Some of the boats having to tack. Whereas, in fact, they want to go that way, they want yeah. to go just to the yeah. left of where they're going, so they have to tax it. There's definitely been a wind shift. Uh, I was assuming that the boats could could just manage to, to have the necessary height to stay there. Um, There's definitely the, been a big uh, right shift. That, the island there is called Kidholm, Kidholm and, and they're going to have to tack to get free of the reef there on the tossing side, where it's right. very, very shallow. And once they're clear of that, then they'll start heading straight for the reef at Tour. At least it's a bit more space to tack there, isn't it, Thomas? Have you sailed in these waters? I have many times, uh, not in the, in the Silver Rudder, but uh, many times in the, the Classic Fin one, the uh, Palby Fin Cup. And yeah. I think I've sailed those maybe more than 25 times. <laughs> so you know exactly where you can go ground and where you did go ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's but sailed around Funa without, uh, you know, if they've got to be honest with themselves, having has gone aground at least once or twice. That's the definition of experience. <laughs> what, learning from others' mistakes, not your own. <laughs> <laughs> what you can see on the left-hand side of the pictures, ladies and gentlemen, is Tour, the beautiful sailing club down there with the new houses that have just been built there. And the, the fleet close to land on the left-hand side. There's plenty of deep water on the left-hand side there. That's the place to be right now. If there's enough wind, that's the place to be, because if you're far, far enough to windward up there, there's a chance you'd be able to clear the reef on the opposite side without having to tack too many times. Those are absolutely amazing pictures, so great uh, applause to the drone pilot out there taking those pictures. They're really, really outstanding footage. The yellow house in the background there, just out of curiosity, is... Uh, is the smokery, it used to be a fish smokery, now it's privately owned yes. uh, house or apartments. So beautiful. I admire it every time I go past. Yeah, so let's just look at some of those boats clearing out. I'd like to be able to see the drone moving slightly further away from us. There you go, there's the IMX 38 that we talked about before, and that's the big open class 40 there on mm, the yeah. left hand side. And look at the angle that it's having to attack. I mean, it's then they're not doing 90 degree angles. It's like there's been a huge shift to the right, which has forced the boats onto the onto a starboard tack. So they're going to be putting in a lot of distance compared to the uh, the smaller starts. Great footage, great films there. Yeah, still quite a bit of current, you see. But yeah, it should definitely. actually be uh, slowing down now. Now should yeah, it? Yeah, I, I believe at about the one o'clock, a thirteen hundred. Yeah. So we've got about another an hour or so, which which would be nice if everybody got the same fare flush washed out of the sound that would be really nice so they get uh, an equal equally fair start because the boats that meet counter current in here and meet counter current in the little belt mm. are really at a disadvantage out there can you see the uh, xr 41 racing this race next year thomas oh yeah definitely it has to be there <laughs> there might be two of them here so do i <laughs> <laughs> I definitely have a confirmed, a confirmed yes from one. If you get it built in time, we're all set, and it would be nice to see the second as well. They will I'm also be excited time. to see yeah. who'll be racing, who'll be racing the uh, the second one. Any ideas yeah. who might be the helmsman and the the one that doesn't have Henrik Jørgensen on it? I'm uh, taking a wild guess and saying uh, Anna Spastiansen. Oh, hey, that's a pretty good guess. Just going back to Anna Spastiansen. Anders has worked for XCOTS forever and ever, and he's the only person, as far as I know, that has completed the Silver Rudder in all seven classes. And this yeah. year he's racing a Dragonfly 25, isn't he? No, it's a DM24, uh, oh, I believe. Oh, DM24, yeah. I'm sorry. Bit of free advertisement yeah. there for Dragonfly boats. Hang on. Yeah, well, good. I mean, And he's he, been employed there as well, actually, for many years. Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. So he knows, uh, he knows this course and he knows the boats. And he knows every single crook and cranny of the course around Foods. Not only has he raced it, he's also won um, on, on several yeah. occasions. He's an outstanding sailor he's and a very, very, good very humble and nice guy. You know, Definitely, he's, really he's a very good friend of mine. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been sailing together for 
Uh, 25 years at least. Yeah. 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 And his brother's a serious sailor on the f in, the, in the fleet. You see him on his uh, in his X35, don't you? Yes, I'm crewing on that actually. So. Oh yeah. 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 Were you on his X41 before that? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I've also been sailing with Torsten for yeah, uh -huh. past 20 years. Yeah. Amazing. The, uh, the 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 friends, the comradeships that exist and arise through sailing are, are absolutely uh, are absolutely amazing. If you don't kill each other on the first race, you end up sticking together for years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. And hey, speaking well. about uh, Anna Spasjansen, actually in 2020 he bought uh, my boat to do the small class. Uh, I have an uh, X302, uh, and he he bought that one, and it was really light wind that that year. I believe he was some uh, almost. Uh, uh, 45 hours uh, underway. No, I, I, yeah. He's not the kind of guy that gives up, is he? He didn't. And, uh, he also came in at a good place, uh, yeah, fourth he, or fifth or something. Yeah. He, yeah, and he will then. He will do this year as well. Yeah. So looking at the drone picture there, look, you've got the boats just clearing the reef on the left-hand side. And that, that left-hand side, you can see, is the absolute last point of tour yeah. before they continue their very close hold course protect um, to windward. And the wind will probably start backing a little bit to the left here. And then, and then they'll have a nice tack on the starboard tack to the tour reef, and that's when they start getting slack on their sheets. And you should see some of these the large boats. Open 40 is looking forward to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of these boats. A lot of the boats with the big wide sterns, transoms, you know, the crew, the, the racing boats. Yeah, definitely. But, yeah. but it would be nice to be from here to be able to see the uh, the boats like the Dela 30 ODs and the and the the Benetton First 27 seascapes, you know, that are that are doing. Uh, Probably by now they'll have set their their masthead kites and will be roaring along. Right, these goes a few Really minutes. looking forward to stretching their legs, I believe. As it says, yeah. yeah. Well, the next the next start that we've got is in seven minutes' time, um, and there's not that much activity in front of the starting line. Now this start that's got this start will be starting in a few minutes. In just seven minutes' time is the extra large with 27 boats. Now, what kind of boats are we going to expect to see here? Yeah, we are seeing the uh, XC47, for instance, and yeah. also uh, a 4.9, X4.9, uh, yeah. uh, uh, also uh, a hybrid boat, actually, also with a lot of battery capacity. And That's uh, right, it was, yeah. it, we were on board that last year with John's boat, yeah. another amazing boat. Have you, uh, did you have the opportunity to go to the harbour and see the boats in the harbour? There's something called the Pure 49, with, called Gore, which is an aluminium boat, you'll see it in a minute, it's got an orange doghouse. Okay. And it's extremely fast, I think, ah. as a retractable, yeah. re retractable keel. Okay, I think I saw it uh, in the far uh, this morning at the at the harbour. We were on board yesterday. It's very, very wide. You know, it looks like it's an ocean racer. There's, the keel can be retracted from one and a half to three and a half meters, three point three meters. Wow. A tiller, a tiller instead of a helm, no, a wheel. So, and then you've got a couple of old classics like the uh, four twelves. How do you think they will be able to compete compared to, let's say, some of the lot newer boats like the, uh, like the, um, I don't know, uh, the XP44s? Well, if they get a lot of uh, uh, a lot of feet, then they they would probably do okay. But as soon as uh, there will be some breaching courses, then uh, then they will be uh, left behind, I believe, by, by Why the that? newer ones. It's uh, f from its time. It's a really uh, a beating machine, so to speak, really inspired by the old uh, Iowa boat. Uh, so actually, so wi wide beam and narrow, narrow stern. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Why, why, why? Just you know, for the for the the, the, the sake of the listeners and the viewers here, why? What was the point of b b building such wide boats with a narrow stern and a wide beam? That means wide in the middle and then narrow at the back. Well, first of all, the back then the uh, Iowa rule were governing, uh, or was at its end when the uh, the uh, 412 was was uh, designed, and it was just inspired by that, and it, that was what looked uh, to be uh, fast at at the time because that was what uh, people were used to see at the at the racing courses, and uh, they were rating really well under uh, IOR. Later on, under IMS, they were penalized a, a bit more, and uh, you began to see uh, uh, the stones uh, widening uh, more and uh, giving. Better dynamics uh, downwind well, as well. Wasn't the old weren't the old rules also based upon the fact that the you know the wider the boat, the longer the water line you'd get as the boat healed, and that one thought was an advantage. Uh, that's true, and there are also I'm not 
that familiar with the uh, IOR rule, but there were some uh, certain stations that needed to be uh, measured, and so you wanted uh, at a certain point near the stern, but not at the stern, to keep it quite wide. Okay, let's uh, go from what we've been looking at in the large start to what our final keel start, which uh, we're filming at the moment, which is our extra large boat. Now these boats are 40 plus feet, so 40.01 yeah. feet. And right now the we're looking at the yeah. XC47. Mm -hmm. And uh, to uh, the leeward of that, if you go slightly to the right mass, yeah. so we just zoom out a little bit, to the right there is the you can talk about that, Thomas. This boat that's, here. Yeah, that's uh, I believe the uh, XP44 of uh, Henry Gernsen. And he better turn around quite fast before yeah. he goes aground. Very I fast. Think he's, I wonder if he's familiar with the ground here, but uh, he's oh, quite know. close. I, I wouldn't. Uh -huh. He's got two and a half minutes to start. I wouldn't oh. go there. Two and a half minutes to start. Quite close. Let's, yeah. But let's talk mm. about that boat and why why we particularly like to talk about him today, bearing in mind that. Uh, We'll he's be talking about the XR. Yeah, he's, he's one of uh, the first owners of the coming uh, XR forty one. I believe he's getting he's hull number ground. four. Yeah. He's got a he's got a alter course very fast now. It looks yeah. like he is. He would really got to turn around now. He was definitely he went aground there. Did you see the ground? He did. Yeah. Oh, too bad. He did. He's got yeah. to take in his sheet to win, but he might be able to clear it. But that how much does an XP forty four weigh? Oh, something like. Uh, uh, off 10, the top of 11. my head, yeah, the, almost 11 uh, tons, I believe. I'm yeah. getting 10, 11 tons, yeah. and that's not a boat you just pull off the ground on your own. So he's got to pull in his uh, his jib to windward, hoping that he kill over yeah. a little bit. And ease the main all that he can, I believe. That's right, yeah. Be able to turn it off the ground, maybe he'll have okay. luck to do that. Let, oh. Let's go back. Yeah. Let's go back to the uh, the uh, drone picture. You can see yeah. the starting line here. There's just a minute and 20 seconds till the start goes. And uh, you know, other than Henrik there to windward, you've got uh, and uh, an X442. You've got oh, yeah, the yeah. Uh, you've got the XC47 with Tornham Cornum on it right behind them. These boats that are coming close to shore are really, really, really pushing their luck. They've got to keep away from this area altogether. There's just not enough water there. Yeah. Okay. And, and then behind there, you've got a first 40. Um, you've got an X the uh, which is this the XC4? Is that next to 37 we can see there on the right hand side? Looks like Henrik yeah. has just come free of the ground, I believe. If he can come Ooh, free now, yeah. in the next yeah. 40 seconds, he might have an amazing start. He just <laughs> has to yeah. take in his star. If he takes in his starboard <laughs> sheet now, he is in free sheet. now. He is free. Yoo -hoo. Wow, that uh, would be amazing. If he Look at the boat behind timing. that. She's just jiving. That's Martin yeah. Meridine in his, uh, in his beautiful Landmark yeah. 43. Yeah. Martin won the single handed Danish uh, uh, DH championship this year. Championship, you know, I think there were nine or eleven boats that started, which was uh, another one of Morden Brandt's innovative inventions, which is a really good idea. You've got 12 seconds to the start. I mean, Henrik Jørgens, I'm not sure if he's sailing or he's just pushing mud. I think that if he takes home his jib, he'll probably be able to come free of the ground. By the looks of him turning the wheels, he's off now, he's free. Aggressive. I he's think still he's just clearing. Oh, yeah. He's still in the mud, is he? I think he is, but uh, he must be clearing now. It would now he is accelerating. I think he's clear Brilliant. now. Yeah. He got an amazing start. <laughs> <laughs> Good, uh, timing. Probably, Good timing. Probably a little <laughs> bit more dramatic than he want to. He's gonna <laughs> hate the. He's gonna hate this film. He really is. Yeah, that's great. Let's go back to the zone. The the uh, the. And the Tom drone. Cornum is also getting a good start. Actually, he's got an amazing start. Mm, you know, yeah. a nice wind with start. I mean, Tom Cornum isn't originally a racer sailor, is he? He's a windsurfer. He's a windsurfer, but a very good one. So he has a really he good sense of wind and uh, sure where has. to go. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's a very, it's a definitely a fast performance mm. cruiser because look at it. Even though it's a, a big, heavy, chunky boat, 47 feet, it's still keeping up nicely, and it's healing over. You know, yeah. it, there's definitely a feeling of a real sailing boat there. It also has a considerable sail area, so it, it's it's still performing, although it's almost a uh, 15 tons of uh, displacement. Sure. Yeah. That's the, the boat I call the pure beer, the 49 foot boat with the big flag at the back. Oh, yeah. You see the aluminium yeah. boat with the with the hard shines, the windows and the sides. We haven't seen that boat here before. It's 49 feet and, and weighs about 13 and a half tons. 13. He can move, mm. he can move 800 tons of 800 uh, uh, liters of water ballast from one side to the other in about 20 seconds. 
That'll definitely come in handy. A couple of boats have run aground here. That's an oh, X-43. Yeah. That X-43 is, uh, is sailed by Frederick, who I race on Martin's Landmark 43 with. Ah, That's Martin yeah. Meredin's old boat, in fact. Looks like he's uh, he's freeing the, uh, the shoal there nicely. Hopefully he is, yeah. Great pictures there from our rib. Look at that. Yeah. Absolutely amazing footage. That's uh, the XP-44. Henrik uh, Jernstein, yeah. yeah. And the... Looking uh, good. Uh, that's the, the the drone picture there at the front of the fleet. It's difficult to see who's actually right at the front there. That's Torben Cornum and is the XC47 with those quite sp quite uh, peculiar or different window shapes, aren't they? Did you design yeah, those? Yeah, uh, not myself, but uh, I was heading the design when they were designed, and uh, it really fits in, uh, we believe, well with uh, the rest of uh, the design. You will see a uh, resemblance of that shape. Uh, Virtually all over the boat. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can see the that below. Uh, in the yeah, I can see that. It's a very, very, <laughs> yeah. it's very what would it say complete. You know, the whole boat's designed that way. It's, it's, it's nice. I think it's you know one of those things one has to get used to. Hey, lovely to see one of our female contestants of the uh, that is crossing the starting line. She had troubles with her engine. We'll, we'll film her in just a second. And looking at the drone pictures there, it's a bit difficult for me to see who's at the right at the front of the fleet. Um, that dark blue boat there, it's a bit difficult unless we zoom in a little bit, but but uh, there's an, a first 40 which is right up there with Sir Newell on board right at the front there. There's also the Polish first 40 which is just in our line of sight there. You can see Johan, if you're there, perhaps you'd like to dr dr drive to the front of the fleet, it's very difficult to <laughs> see. Is that, right? is that the first boat? Yeah, that is the first boat at the moment, the HP 44. Talk to us about that's Ricard Groot. Ricard is uh, has actually got two boats on the water. He did have Henrik Jansen's boat, the other XP44, used to be yeah. Ricard's. Yeah, uh, Ricard's a good yeah. sailor. Do you, do you know Ricard Thomas? Yeah, yeah, I know him quite well from uh, also when he uh, had the new boat uh, mm -hmm. That's also uh, quite special. The keel, the rudder, and uh, special uh, uh, bow spread. Of and, yeah, yeah, and then carbon spars. <laughs> Are yes, they, this, I believe so. Oh, yeah. I believe they are. Yeah. Who else have you got around you? To, uh... So uh, it it was a really good start for the X uh, for Torben in the new XC49, but also it was a very fine start for Martin Dean. He's just behind me here. If Petra just uh, goes around, oh, you're on a drill shot as well. That's Where fine. It's okay. Need your camera. Right, we need your up. microphone to be closer to your mouth. Yeah, we're sailing quite fast now because it's quite windy here, so it's a little bit difficult to uh, to talk to. Sure, you. sure. Uh, I hope you hear me fine. Yeah, we're in the front of the fleet, and it was a really clean and nice start. Uh, the landmark got off fairly well, so did uh, one of the larger dynamics. The XP44 that we were just with, uh, your good friend, got a very very nice start as well. There's definitely yeah, did, uh, the right shift that you also talked about. I think we're going to see that these boats tack a lot down there because I think we're going to have the the right shift and the wind that you also talked about previously. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see if they need to tack down here when we cross uh, around two or. Because what we can see from here, Johan, is that it looks like the wind has gone back to the left a bit, and and they're definitely slacking out in their sheets. They're they're beating at, at the start. But as soon as they clear, then they're just going like the rocket. And you said you're going quite fast now. Don't forget these boats are 40 foot plus. So some of these boats will be doing, you know, 8 to 10, 11 knots as soon as they get some slack on their sheets. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, they're going really, really fast. And with the current with them, we also need to be very fast. We're just going to go down, and then we're going to have a look at the first 49 that you guys talked about previously. So yes. uh, we're going to be with you in just a minute. Fantastic, thank you. We're just standing up here at the uh, at the starting line still, and we can see a couple of, of the really, really big boats that have had a really tough start. And we've got two big boats. We've got a big XP44 on the opposite side. I think it's an XP44. And then you've got uh, um, start number 384. Unfortunately, went aground. That's uh, Anas Nubia and his RM1350, a huge, good-looking boat. He's managed to free himself from the ground now. And, and looking at the drone photos from here, we've got the boats definitely slacking their sheets off. Would you say, Thomas? They've got a bit oh, slack yeah, on a yeah. bombing. 
How fast are those boats going, do you think, considering the fact that we've got two knots of current going with us? Uh, over ground, definitely uh, 10 knots or something. Incredible. And that's that boat, the Pure, as they call it. Uh, the 49 foot boat with, uh, with the uh, shiftable ballast. He's got like a handle in the, bo the middle of his cockpit and he can wow. just rotate and yeah. he drops down you know, the, uh, the, 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 the reverse baler that sucks the water in and in 20 seconds he can move 800, tons, 800 kilos of ballast from one side to the other. It'd be Where interesting to see how, far this boat, how fast this boat is. It looks like a really fast ocean racer when you're on board it with the doghouse or coach roof and the, the, ba the bow is lifted out of the water when it's, uh, when it's just laying in the harbor but the silver yeah, rudder is very much about the silver rudder is also very much about the man on the helm and uh, not just the boat. But the interesting thing is the, the guy racing this boat actually built it himself, he owns the yard. Uh -huh. So yeah, another one of the uh, great silver rudder stories. So this was the last of the, the, the keel boat to start with uh, 93, I mean 93 extra large boats. I mean to, to be able to c gather 93 boats of this size between you know, 40 feet and above that is quite exceptional. We don't see that many many places in the world. Unfortunately, there's one of the very large boats. Is it the 4.9? Yeah, yeah unfortunately it's uh, John Flux. Uh, John and his uh, X 4.9 has gone aground on the opposite side. Uh, John has got that beautiful grey boat, yeah, with the uh, with the electrical engine. And unfortunately, I can see the area that it's gone aground. Tom, is very very shallow over there. It's really really shallow, and a boat of that size is probably not going to be able to free there with that wind direction. Maybe if he's lucky. Maybe if he's lucky, but it's you know it's going to be he's going to be the wind is going to be pushing him further and further ashore over there, isn't it? Ah, uh, I'm not. Quite sure, actually. Is he clearing he may, it? Yeah, he may be clearing it, but uh, it will take some work. I'm just looking through my binoculars here, and it is uh, it is quite difficult to see, but it does look like he might be clearing the shoal at the ground. Yeah. So the next two I would uh, try to tighten that main. Yeah, bring the main home a bit. Yeah. To get the boat to heel over just a little bit. To make it heel over and also to. Uh, bow to uh, come up a bit. Yeah. The boat's definitely turning, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And he's slacking off in his sheets, unfurling a bit more of his jib. Looks like he's going to make yeah. it. I hope he does. He's a nice guy, a lovely guy. So let's go back to your XR41, Thomas, whilst we've got a bit of time. You know, once in a while I interrupt you and I'd like to talk about some of the great shots on the, on the, on the sure. screen there. That's the important um, stuff for today. Yeah, well, we've, yeah, well, we've got an X442 there, and behind that we've got the Pure, the 49-foot aluminium boat. And let's just spend a second talking about the weather before we talk about the XR41 and 41. Because I mean, can you imagine better sailing conditions on this? Absolutely not. And hopefully it uh, it stays with that breeze. Uh, I think I saw from the forecast that it might be a bit soft and patchy when they uh, come into uh, the Great Belt. Yeah, they have forecast a little bit less or a lot less. Yeah. And in fact, they've had forecast areas of fog during the night, which could be very tricky for uh, for all of the boats. Definitely. But I, but I saw at the north of Fyn there were just some pressure building, I believe. So yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the forecast looked better today than it did yeah. last night. So uh, hopefully it's going to be one of the really, really comfortable, comfortable silver rudders where you're not uh, forced to hike for the entire uh, race round. That's uh, Henry Jones and the XP44 we can see. It looks like that aluminium boat's just uh, take overtaken him to, to leeward, doesn't it? I know the yeah. angles are difficult to see here. Let's just go yeah, to your hand. Your hand, tell us what you can bit. see. Let's see, well, let's talk about the boat that we were on board. Look, he's put his cutter stake, you see that? Yeah, yeah. So he's got two head yeah, sails. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's definitely what has just happened. Uh, he overtook uh, the big yeah, head, uh, what is it? Making some yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he went down and overtook the two boats. The thing is, he's gone quite a bit down to, to Lee now. I don't know, it seems like the boats are able to hold it on the port side tack, but otherwise, he's going to be in trouble and going to have to tack uh, as we, uh, we go closer to the wind around here now. So, it's quite interesting to see if this tack should pay off for him or if he's going to have to tack. Do you think that's why he's furled his uh, his uh, outer head head sail? I mean the the pure forty nine. You see that? I just know yeah, from the film. Yeah, for sure. What to make it easier? Had, exactly, because he had it out all the way down through here, and it seemed like it worked for him in the beginning. 
beginning, it was just, uh, you know, laughing. Was it laughing in English? I don't know. It was not really yeah. catching yes, the wind. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but it started catching the wind, and he overtook the 442 and the XP44 to the leeward. Uh, we also have a guy going the other way here, Kiwi, just on vacation in Germany. He's just on holiday, is he? Side <laughs> Up here to the, the yeah, see that they're actually able to stay on the port tack. So it seems like the wind has shifted back again. I don't know if you can see, but the fourth boat is still problem. He's doing quite well. And in front, we still have the XP44, which is leading the race at the moment. So that's Paul Stianson, is it? In the. Uh... Yeah, exactly, it is, yeah. And then we have Martin Nadine, uh, just, uh, just oh, no, one no, road. Oh, no, it's Old. Uh, okay, you, yeah, we need, we need you yeah, to put your microphone. Yeah, Closer to your mouth, and we lose the sound quite a lot. So you've got you've got um, you've got Gord, Richard Gord in the lead, and then you have Mar the Martin Meredinas number two. Is that what you're saying? Top corner in the fourth place. Yeah, that. Uh, no, not quite. There's one other boat there up there. I can't quite see what it is, but there's one other boat up there. We also have the the Luffer 30 uh, 40. Sorry, the Luffer 40 is uh, is going quite fine as well. I think it's the first yes. time Silver Rider attendee, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. Jakob from Aarhus, he's doing mm -hmm. quite well as well. Uh, right now, he's being packed down a little bit by the first 40 as well, but he's going to get free in a second. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Is that, is yeah, that, so we're uh, here right Jakob, now. Jakob Lohenstein in Alba, in the, in the low for 40? Yeah, it is. Exactly. Yeah, it is. Okay, lovely. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that's very nice. But it seems like they're going to be able to hold it on uh, on one tack and get out of the sound without trouble. Uh, so that's really nice. One of the boats are cutting it a little bit close. You know, you really have to stay on the right side. Watch out behind you. You really have to stay on the right side of this green buoy and, and, and keep that. Otherwise, you will run aground on this corner, especially in these large boats. So they need to respect that. It seems like they're doing it. So that's very good. Great. Thanks, Johanna. We're just going to we've taken the camera back. I, no, that's you still filming. I'm sorry. I just look like two boats are very similar. What's the boat that just passed you there? It just passed you to. Uh, the oh, that's the. Side. Yeah, that's the X412 uh, Wückenblume. Yeah. Don't know it, but it's. It seems like we're back to champagne sailing again. We have a quite Brilliant. large loaf. I think it's a loaf 43 coming here with yeah, the black right. sails. Yes, that's a loaf 43. Also looks very, very nice. Beautiful. Oh, great shot. Yeah, so Thanks that's actually most of the extra large boats passing here. We're going to go back to the starting line to be ready for the multi hulls. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Johan. We should just go back to the starting line there. Thanks very much. Now, the next start that we're going to be seeing and experiencing this, uh, this, well, I'd say it's afternoon now, isn't it? It's quarter past 12, are the multi hulls. Just whilst we warm up to the multi hull start, yeah, we'll. Uh, just spend a couple of minutes just finish off with Thomas talking about the the XR41 Thomas uh, when can the general public expect to see an XR41 in the water for the very first time in the water uh, Christmas Eve I believe <laughs> <laughs> not under my Christmas tree <laughs> <laughs> that'll be just about the time and we need to get it in the water before uh, New Year's so really yeah Hey, that's great news. I'm looking forward to coming to visit you. Will it be in Heathersloe? Yes. Definitely. Great. Yeah. I'm going to invite myself for a Christmas present. Thomas, thanks very, very much. Thanks very much for coming and visiting us. Thanks for your expert knowledge on 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 the X's and all the other X's you built, but especially the XR41. Thanks for coming all the way from uh, southern Denmark to visit us. My pleasure. Ever, you, My pleasure. Are you ever going to race the silver rudder? Everybody tells me it's a big, big mistake that I didn't until now, and uh, I believe they're right. So yes, I will be coming at a certain point, maybe Brilliant. even next year. Yeah. That would be nice. Uh, thanks a lot for coming, Thomas. You're welcome. Great to see uh, you. It was uh, nice of you to have me here. And thanks to Yachts for sponsoring us and taking good care of us and sending you here. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, uh, about 40 minutes till the next start, which will be the small multi hulls, and uh, joining me will be Peter. Peter Gwarning from uh, Gwarning Dragonfly. I look forward to his company in just about 10 minutes' time. Thank you.